Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm on North Charles Street out in front of today's Charles Theater. Although we're not going to talk about the Charles Theater so much today, we're going to talk about the famous ballroom and the Left Bank Jazz Society that operated out of here for many years. But before we jump into that, I wanted to share some really incredible news. Um, just yesterday, one of our longtime donors called me up and said that she was offering a $50,000 challenge match to Baltimore Heritage. Um, wow. Um, and she wanted to do it in memory of our founder from 1960, William Bolton Kelly, or Bo Kelly, as many of us knew him. Um, and she wanted to make it an incentive for people to donate for the first time, or if they were longstanding donors like herself, uh, maybe to increase their, uh, their donation. So the way the challenge works is that, say, you're one of our great $35 members, and this year, instead of donating $35, you donate $40, your extra $5 will be matched and turn into $10 for us. Or if you bumped up and became a $50 donor, um, your extra $15 would turn into $30. If you're never donated to us before and you donate $35, um, that will double and become $70. Um, so really pretty neat opportunity. I can hardly say the words $50,000. That is such an enormous sum for us. Uh, but believe me, we are going to do our very best to maximize this opportunity. So thank you to everybody who's donated um, and thank you for everybody to everybody um, who's going to help us meet this challenge. All right, let's jump into the famous ballroom. The building behind me was not built as a ballroom or a theater. It was built as a streetcar barn in 1892. That lasted only for about 10 years. The company went out of business and the building became kind of a maintenance shed for buses. Then it went through several other uses. It was a, uh, I believe, an auto showroom for a while. It had a hundred lane bowling alley for a while. I believe for a brief time it was a library for the blind. Um, in the 1930s, it was thoroughly converted, though, in one of the city's first adaptive reuse projects um, into a performance venue. And from its earliest days, it began attracting some of the uh, great performers of the time. Um, they were names uh, that some of us will know quite well, Benny Goodman and Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller and Artie Shaw. Um, the conversion uh, of the building turned it into, uh, was modeled, excuse me, after um, New York City's famous famous Roseland, um, and that's what our uh, famous ballroom became here uh, at that time. From 19, uh, the 1960s, excuse me, a local band leader named Bernie Allen um, was the primary tenant, and he in turn, beginning in, the, in 1966, uh, turned it over to the Left Bank Jazz Society. Um, let me read to you what uh, Baltimore Sun writer Jim Dilt said about concerts at the famous ballroom um, in the 1960s uh, and 70s. He said, the the conversation was among students and activists, neo-politicians, big band sidemen, members of the city's demimond. And if you don't know what demimond means, which I didn't, it means a class of women considered of doubtful morality. Um, if you got to know Jim Diltz, that is such a Jim Diltz word. But that's who was hanging out here. Importantly, it was one, uh, the famous ballroom was one of the city's first interracial entertainment venues um, and uh, played an incredibly important role in that regard. Um, but it was not just friendships and interracial conversation that went on at the Famous. The folks who attended shows there were in for some serious jazz. Um, people like Charles Mingus played here, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie. Duke Ellington played here. Um, his band apparently got the wrong showtime in their heads and didn't show up. Um, so the folks who were there that night uh, got to hear Duke Ellington play solo, a really rare opportunity um, that apparently was quite appreciated uh, by folks who were there. And John Coltrane played one of his last concerts here before he died at the young age of 40 in 1967. The folks who gathered here um, got to see these greats under the stars for the famous ballroom ceiling was painted as uh, as the heavens looked. Um, in uh, in let me actually wrap up by saying a few words about the Left Bank Jazz Society itself. Um, it was formed in 1964, um, and the same year as the uh, important federal civil rights uh, legislation was passed, and it was really an outgrowth or a second iteration of a group that had formed in the 1950s called 
the Interracial Jazz Society. The Interracial Jazz Society's mission was to break down racial barriers in the city's music halls at the time. And the Left Bank Jazz Society very much carried on that mission. Here's what its constitution had to say. It says its members should share a love of contemporary American jazz music and a belief in the democratic ideals of freedom and equality, regardless of race, creed, or color, which this music exemplifies. Um, before coming to the famous ballroom, the Left Bank Jazz Society held concert in in concerts in places like the Al Ho Club in Franklin Town and the Madison Club in East Baltimore. Here at the uh, here at the famous, they really hit their stride, packing in hundreds of people, mostly on Sunday afternoons, beginning at five, six dollars got you in the door. You could bring your own food and booze if you wanted, um, or you could, for $1.40, uh, buy, uh, buy barbecue from the, uh, uh, the famous's kitchen, which apparently was really good, and for 40 cents more, you could get a side dish like greens or potato salad. Um, the Left Bank uh, had a good run here until 1984. By the 1980s, music like hip-hop was overtaking jazz, um, which became uh, uh, had a much small, smaller audience. Um, they lost their lease in 1984, but continued holding concerts at Coppin State University all the way up until 2002 when the last concert was held. Some say that that was the last concert in the Left Bank Jazz Society is dead. Others say it is only hibernating, and I, for one, sorely hope that the latter is true. And if it is true, um, you will be sure to find me in the and among the folks at the very first concert in the revived Left Bank Jazz Society. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.